Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome the winner of the Specsavers Children's Senior Category, that's a mouthful, Louise <laughs> O'Neill with her book after the show. You've one of these at home already. I do. You won last I year. I did. For I best did. Newcomer. I did. Here you are. I know. Again. It's so you get a bit greedy after a while. I was like, I want all of them. <laughs> Is that best cry? I'll take it. <laughs> so I don't care. <laughs> yeah. So it's incredible. It's incredible to win again. Now, your book has been hailed really as having, I suppose, a searingly honest portrayal of life for Irish teenagers in this world of social media, this image conscious world. Maybe to introduce us to your main character, Emma Donovan, yeah. and tell us a little bit about Emma. Um, yeah, well, the book is centred around Emma, really. She's an 18 year old girl who's growing up in a small town called Ballin Tomb in West Cork. And she's beautiful and intelligent and popular and has the world at her feet, really. Um, and she goes to a party one night and she gets drunk and she takes drugs. And then the next morning she wakes up and she's been thrown on the front porch of her house and she has no memory of how she got there and it's only when pictures start to emerge on social media that she can piece together what's happened to her the night before. Now you as we mentioned you've won a category that's technically children's senior mm -hmm. but the book you don't hold back on the book at all I mean you really challenge your teenage readers with yeah. graphic content with strong ideas strong moral questions. Yeah. Was that really important to you or did it just emerge in the writing um, as you began to I approach I think I'm very lucky that I have a publisher that's never attempted to censor me. Um, I think with um, the f um, Only Ever Yours, the first book, they were really surprised, I think, by the fact that it had such strong crossover appeal. So with Asking For It, they didn't want to limit it to an age category. They didn't want to limit it to a gender. They said this book is for everyone. So, which I totally agree with because I want a private jet and I think everyone should buy a coffee. So, mama needs her royalties. Champagne all around. Yeah. <laughs> now, the interviews you've done around the book, you've raised the tough issues, you've mentioned that for Irish society and the way that we present and I suppose that we deal with young mm. teenagers and maybe we're naive too. Did it seem to you that this was a discussion that was missing in Irish society? Do you um, feel the book has really brought those kind of issues to the fore? I think it's not just in Irish society. I think this is a global issue. Um, you know, uh, victim blaming, slut shaming, the way we perceive and treat women and um, the way we treat victims of sexual assault um, I, I think that's a global phenomenon um, I just I suppose having grown up in a small town in Ireland was very familiar with that context and wanted to explore this issue within an Irish um, uh, context um, but I do think that this is a conversation that we need to be having which is why I wrote the book because you know, consent, which is the crux of the book, really, and the crux of any um, sexual assault, or most of them anyway, is something that we don't really discuss. Um, and I think that we need to be having these conversations with our young men and our young women. Now, obviously, it's a topic that you feel passionately about. Mm -hmm. But as a writer, on the one hand, you're trying to maybe shine a light on this issue. But you also have to tell a story. Mm -hmm. You have to create characters that we care about and that we engage with. How did you manage juggling those two very different jobs? Um, I mean, that's a difficult question. Good. Uh, yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> that's why you're here. That's a difficult question. I'm just a genius and it just works that way. Um, I just put a lot of work in. That's the only way I can you know, say it. I, I put a lot of work into my books. Um, I'm, qu I'm quite an obsessive writer in that, you know, when I'm, as I always say, when I'm writing, I give up um, drinking and dating. And those are my two favorite things to do in life. So I'm very focused. Um, and I just really, I think I was just so absorbed in the story and really took on, I think, Emma um, and her personality nearly. And just really, I wanted to create a very real world, a very authentic story. Because as you said, it doesn't matter what issues that you're dealing with, um, even though those are important to me, if the story is not compelling, then people aren't going to read it. No, you can't beat people over the head and force them yeah. to read it. They have to want to pick it up. Yeah, so absolutely. that's where the storyteller bit comes yeah. in. Well, obviously you've done it with absolute style and aplomb. Oh, the thank book you. has had such a wonderful reaction to it. And huge congratulations thank on winning you. your award tonight. I'm What's next for you, Louise? Um, well, I just for signed. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. What categories um, are left? I am um, all of them. Um, the cookbook. No, I'm joking. Um, I, uh, <laughs> I, um, yeah, I just signed another two book deal with Quirkus, um, my publishers, but they're going to be adult books. So as, as a friend said, it's like, oh, now you're really going to go for it. I was like, I know as if I really <laughs> held back in the other two. Um, but yeah, so that's exciting but I don't think I'll have anything out until 2016. So I won't be at next year's awards. You'll all be devastated to <laughs> hear. I'm sorry. Well, speaking personally, I would be devastated. Oh, thank you. There. Louise, huge congratulations and the best of luck with that deal. It's a wonderful Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Louise O'Neill. Thank you.